Well, Razorback fans, I don't know about you, but I am so excited about next season. Man, it is just, I'm bursting with excitement. I don't know how I can't be more excited. In fact, if my nipples were any harder, my clothes would explode with excitement because of next season in football. <sighs> You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 1037thebuzz.com. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. I know I sure did. And uh, for those of you who can probably hear from my voice and probably could make an assumption of what it was last week, I've been battling this crap, man. I've just been, uh, I don't know, that time of year when it changes and the weather and everything. I'm on the better end of it now, though. So, Hopefully this is about as uh, bad as it's ever going to sound. But yeah, I just wasn't feeling great last week. And it's amazing how uh, tough things can be when you talk for a living and not being able to talk. So uh, bear with me on that, but appreciate everybody being patient with me no matter what. But there are so many things to happen over this weekend. In fact, we're not even going to have time to run into the basketball side of things. I'll probably save that for tomorrow uh, because there's so much to really talk about in football. Folks, you know, Arkansas lost to Missouri pretty handedly. And I don't think anybody's surprised by that. And I know we'll talk about some of the fun stuff with Missouri here in a little bit, but Arkansas just got smoked 48 to 14 at home and their final two sec home games. They got beat 48 to 10 and then 48, 14, just not even close, not even competitive, not even a game. And Sam Pittman's coming back next year. He is. And I try to always take things into consideration as far as in the moment. And I was there at the game. There's actually a much better crowd than I thought that would be there, to be honest with you. But fans showed up. Fans had nothing to cheer for. And that was pretty much the result of it all. Missouri was very dominant pretty much from beginning to end. Arkansas didn't really stand a chance. And that was that. So how in the world... As a Razorback fan, are you supposed to be excited or hopeful next year? I mean, it's been announced Sam Pittman's coming back, right? I mean, AM already hired their coach, looks like, with Mike Elko over at Duke. Mississippi State has hired a coach, Jeff Levy, offensive coordinator who was at Oklahoma. So there's programs there that made coaching changes that have excitement. And there's some programs that at least haven't made any coaches changes so far that may be sticking with their guys similar to what Arkansas is, but it's just, how do you feel good about next year? I don't like, just to be honest, I don't, there is nothing I feel good about for next season. And it's depressing. Like it's really sad. Borderline angry. Borderline, it makes me angry because we know Arkansas football, for the grand scheme of things, it's not a program that has just been, you know, national title contending year in and year out, which I love how people say that is like some sort of insult when it's like, you know, there's only like a 10 programs at the most that are actually national championship contending programs year in and year out. Like there's very few of them that do that. And that's okay. Like, I don't think anybody was going into this season hoping or predicting at least that this team was going to win a national championship. If they were, they were pretty much off their rocker. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about just postseason play. If I would have put a poll question out before the year started about Arkansas making a bowl game or not making a bowl game, I would guess the vast majority of people would have said, oh, for sure, minimum, yeah, they'll make a bowl game. And even if you threw in, well, what if they only got five wins? People would be like, no way, no way. There's just no way. But if I told you four and eight before the year started, you all were probably like, all right, who got hurt? <laughs> like, did, did all the starters get hurt? Did the, you know, did something something happen where someone was ineligible? Like, what, 
what happened would be the ultimate question for it. And I just sat there and watching that game on Friday night, almost laughing about it because I'm like, this, this is real. This is a real thing where you've gone from nine wins, seven wins, to four wins. And you got your taints handed to you by two SEC teams at home to end the season. Like your worst SEC losses this year, folks, your, your two worst losses this year came against Auburn and Missouri at home at the end of the year. Nobody would have predicted that either. Not, yeah, not Bama on the road where you only lost by three or LSU on the road where you only lost by three. Not Ole Miss where you lost by seven. Like none of those teams that are actually the best teams in the SEC. No, you actually were competitive in those games. You actually gave them all they wanted in those games. You lost to Auburn and Missouri badly. How do you just sit there and say, you know what? It's fine. It's good. We feel good about the direction of the program. Well, part of it is going to be the offensive coordinator hire, maybe. But still, it's really hard for me to believe in Sam Pittman. I'm going to be honest about it. Like, I just don't know how you, as a Razorback fan, can say, hey, this is going to be all right. Like, what can you point to? Where, where can you go with it? What, what, where can you get some excitement from? I mean, I know there's going to be a lot of change with the roster and coaches, at least on the offense, but, like, how do you sit there and be like, yeah, but I still believe they'll get the right guys in and the right pieces in. And I, and I don't even want to hear about NIL ever again from Sam Pittman. Don't act like NIL is not doing you good because you know what? As I said before, NIL is not what made you go 4-8. and eight. Lack of talent was not what made you go 4-8 and eight this year. It was not a national championship caliber roster, but it wasn't 4-8. and eight. That's coaching. And I also took a major issue with Sam Pittman after the game where he had this question asked to him by Trey Biddy of Hawk Sports. And Sam Pittman's response was really a one of, like, I, I was not a fan of it at all. Just take a listen. Yeah, Coach, with uh, Hunter giving you his backing for next year and just generating, trying to generate some momentum going into the offseason, with this performance, how, how do you generate that um, going into the offseason? I don't know. Somebody else. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, really? That's the response you're going to give Pittman? I don't know. Somebody else. It's just we got even mad at the, at the idea of the question. Seriously. Seriously. You know, if you, had, if you had the right mindset about a question like that in a press conference like that, you know what you should have responded? You know what good, sound-minded coaches would have responded with? A simple, well, let me tell you how we get that momentum. Let me tell you how we get that. I go out and I'm going to get a great offensive staff together, one that's going to be next level elite. And we're going to get guys that can recruit. We're going to get guys that can develop. And we're going to get guys through this transfer portal that's going to turn this offense into a whole new level of good. Like they are going to really take off, be one of the best offenses in the SEC because our staff is going to be so good. And once people see that, once they see our staff, and once they see the players that we're bringing in and the players we're bringing back and everything, they're going to see where the excitement's going to be coming from. That's what you say, okay? That's what you say in that situation. You do not say, I don't know, next guy. That's piss poor. That's a joke. And that set me off more than anything on Friday. I didn't expect Arkansas to win. I didn't pick them to win. None of you did. But you have the audacity after the game to just, I don't know, next question over a legitimate question. That should have been your opportunity to give fans hope and excitement, to give them a reason to believe in you. People don't like you right now, Coach Pittman. You're not liked right now. And it has nothing to do with who you are as a person. It has to do with your performance on the field as head coach. It's been bad. It's been bad, and it's in year four where this was your worst team, worst season yet in year four, and you just have the audacity to just blow off that question and to blow everything off like that. No, 
No, how, how, like, how am I supposed to believe in you then? I don't know. Next question. That's a joke. And right there, again, shows how hard it is to be hopeful as a Razorback fan right now. How hard it is to have any sort of excitement or any sort of faith that this is going to be better next year. Stop doing this. I, I, I have never, like, this is to the level to me, this is my personal thing, to the level of me of almost like a Houston nut deal where it's like, why, why is this guy being protected so much? Why is this guy having, you know, the, the backing of the AD and then everyone just acting like it should be okay and just, no, it's fine. I know Hunter your chick put out a statement. Like, I know this, this season's a disappoint has been disappointing for all of us. Yeah, but nobody has said anything as to why it's going to be better. Nobody has said and given a legitimate, reasonable excuse or anything about why Sam Pittman's the guy, why it's going to be better next year, why it's it's all going to be well and good. What are you going to do as a head coach? What are you going to change? What are you going to adjust? Now, a lot of this stuff will be happening once they actually get hires in. You know, maybe they'll have some more explanations there. But the audacity of Sam Pittman to act that way, I'm not a fan of that. It's nobody. It's not the media. It's not the fans. It's no one's fault. This is your gig. You're the head coach. And you just got your butts handed to you in your final two SEC games in front of your home fans. You got embarrassed many times. And you're the one that's going to cock an attitude about it. I ain't with that. I ain't with it. So how do you be hopeful? You don't. I'm not. Until I see something, something big, something crazy, something wild that can really generate some sort of excitement, I'm not believing in it. I refuse to believe in it. And it's just, it's frustrating that you even have to like have this conversation right now. Like it just feels like he, it almost feels like he's a coach that's going to get fired, but he's not. You know what I'm saying? Like that's something that a fire, a, a coach who's about to get fired would say. But he's not, at least not at the time of the recording of this podcast. Oh, man. We'll talk a little bit more about the offense and about uh, the OC and uh, maybe some chances there, maybe some things that could really change some things up. But folks, I got, folks, I got to tell you about game time. And how a lot of times when we're trying to buy tickets for games, maybe not necessarily Razorback football games, because those are easy to come by these days. But when it comes to other sporting events, whether it's the NFL or maybe some concerts that we're looking to go to, maybe some comedy shows, you know, whatever it is, it can be really frustrating to deal with some of the wild and crazy fees that get thrown around when it comes to buying these tickets with third party tickets uh, sites. But you don't have to worry about that anymore with game time because it's the only ticketing app. That gives you complete peace of mind with each and every purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know what to expect when you arrive. And as all in prices show your total up front, so there's no those hidden, hidden fees at the very back end of it, uh, like so many other websites that do. So you download the Game Time app today and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College. That's L O C K E D O N. C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Next move, I guess for Arkansas football is going to be who the offensive coordinator is going to be. Hooray. And, you know, I was thinking about names that get thrown around. And, you know, people have always just kind of said, like, oh, th this is who we should go get. And, oh, okay, that's that's that should work, yes, yeah, so, no, so no problem. I, I get kind of sick of that. Like, again, everyone's like, oh, I go Cliff Kingsbury. Oh, okay, sure, he'll be here. I mean, why wouldn't Cliff Kingsbury come here? I mean, really? Coming in for a one-year coach that's going to be here, like, which is an overblown thing, by the way. I think that uh, well, there could be there could be some good offensive coordinators. That you just have to sign them to a two-year deal, which is not out of the uh, craziness. Two-year deal, they'll pay him almost two million dollars a year, which I think is feasible. 
then yeah, I think you could do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, a lot of names getting thrown around. I've seen um, a few people talk about, you know, some of the OCs at like James Madison talking about there. Uh, somebody also said, uh, I guess it was Ben Arbuckle, who is the Washington State offensive coordinator. Thought that maybe he could be somebody, but I, I don't I don't know what a, what the right name is because like I look at it as the defensive coordinator hire with Travis Williams, you know I didn't know who Travis Williams was like really I mean you know this wasn't a guy that was you know on the on the list of names I'm like oh okay well if they got Travis Williams that would be a fantastic hire which it ended up being I still am a fan of the defensive staff that uh, that Arkansas and Sam Pittman were able to establish this year offensively it hasn't been the case so. I, I again, I don't know who would be just the, the easy go to name and something that would be able to step right in. However, if it goes back to the whole point of giving Razorback fans hope, if you get an offensive coordinator that has proven to have a really successful offense, regardless of where they've been at, at least a guy that hasn't, you know, had some a lot of failures, a lot of issues, or has been fired from a bunch of places, you know, get somebody that is legit, that has a proven record that is highly thought of and highly spoken of. If you do something like that, I think that it'll really excite people. Now, what would be the best thing, but I also feel like it's probably a little bit too much to ask, is getting somebody who's been a head coach before. Because we know that was a problem with Sam Pittman. Not having Barry Odom to be not only the defensive coordinator, but kind of a guy who had been a head coach, an established head coach, and uh, guy who can has been in those situations to help out. Uh, without having him, you saw what happened in those in-game situations with Sam Pittman where I felt like there was a lot of bad moves, a lot of bad clock management, game management in general, just things like that that can't happen. And so it'd be nice to get somebody who's maybe got a little head coaching experience, but to me that's not the, the most important thing. The most important thing is to get somebody who has shown some success at different places and also has an offense that I feel like can be more of the, you know, an offense that's close to what Kendall Bryles ran here at Arkansas, just a, a spread RPO, um, you know, ha just go downfield, have a dual threat quarterback. To me, that's what Arkansas needs to have in order to be successful. But I uh, this whole idea of just going, well, I'll get a pro style guy. I'm like, okay, well that doesn't even, what does that mean anymore these days? I don't even know because uh, Danny, this was supposed to be pro style and who oh, buddy, well, whatever we, what we saw there was, uh, yeah, that, that was pretty trashy. So just get the right guy get somebody who's got that experience. Um, and hopefully from what I understand, again, it's just, it's not like I'm breaking any news here, but from what I understand is they already got their guy pretty much in, in the spot and they've had it since really last week uh, i could see it being announced as soon as early this week which you know maybe that makes sense as to why the offense really showed no energy whatsoever because maybe the coaching staff on the offensive side knew that they were out the door so maybe that's an explanation but either way i feel like it could be a quick, pretty quick turnaround i feel like it could be announced pretty quickly so we'll wait and see but jeez it's just gets get somebody that makes sense get somebody that just makes sense uh, we'll get into the final segment and something that I thought was uh, pretty funny and amusing over the weekend here in just a second. But folks, as the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay very hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 money line bet. It's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get into the action. The app is so easy to use and there's a wild range of so many different options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL, NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, and man, I was uh, I had quite an interesting social media experience over the Thanksgiving weekend. I'll say that. Uh, for those of you who may not know, 
And also welcome, of course, all you uh, Missouri fans who have been patiently waiting for my very first post on my podcast so you can flood the comments section with all the great stuff. Appreciate you watching. Um, for those of you who may not remember, when I was on Michael Bratton's That SEC podcast back at SEC Media Days in the summertime, I took a couple of jabs at Missouri. And one of the things that I had said and that Michael Bratton so wonderfully clipped for me and put up on social media is when I refer to Missouri. And I talked about how that game has been very frustrating for Arkansas. And also something that me and Mike have talked about many times, like it frustrated Razorback fans because there's been a few times during that, during the series where Arkansas felt like they should have won games that they didn't. I think that 2016 is a great example of that. I think last year was a great example of that where it's been frustrating that Arkansas has not won the game because they felt like they were the better team. I'd even make an argument for 2020, you know, because uh, Arkansas felt like they should have won that game. But they didn't. Missouri was a better team that day, and that's great. But that's all I really said. And I also uh, felt like, just to give it even more context, I also felt like, you know, Arkansas and Missouri – even though they have this forced rivalry and everything, it means a lot more to Missouri than it does Arkansas, and it shows because maybe that's the reason why they've been losing as many games as they have. <coughs> but after I had that little thing clipped about that, and I guess I should have just played it back for you just to let it, you hear it in its own context, but suddenly I'm getting blown up, I guess, with Missouri fans taking that clip and then coming after me for it. And then it, it got so much so that even uh, players – were uh, tweeting at me about it, like Missouri players. Not just any Missouri players. Not about like Luther Burden, apparently. He like tweeted at me and was having some fun with it, and then Eli Drinkwitz retweeted him because of it and stuff, and I'm just sitting here, and I'm like, okay, hold on. You guys used me as your as this is much of a motivation? Seriously? Me? Because <laughs> I made some jokes about you and your program, and I made – what I still believe is a very true statement that, yeah, Arkansas should have beaten you in times that they were the better team, but they didn't. <coughs> Excuse me. But I guess it's the same thing, though. For instance, on Friday, where if Arkansas had beaten you, Missouri, you probably would have felt the same way, right? That you were the better team, that you should have won that game, but you didn't. Because I would have said it. I'm like, yeah, Missouri is a better team than Arkansas is. Arkansas shouldn't have won that game, but they did. Frustrating, wouldn't it have been? Frustrating for you, frustrating for the season, frustrating for all that. It's the same concept. So I just felt like it was a weird flex to use that as whatever motivation that you all needed to add to uh, your season into this game. Well, congrats. You beat a 4-8 and eight Arkansas team that was pretty terrible this year. You had, guys have a good team. You had a good season. You're 10-2. and two. Congratulations. It's been a good year. Celebrate that. But here's the thing. I'm not taking back what I said because I still believe it. It doesn't change anything. But I'm glad that I could add to this non-existent rivalry that seems to be more and more becoming a rivalry, I guess, for the dumbest of reasons. But I'm glad I could be able to add something to the mix. And I'm glad that I was able to provide some entertainment for all of you guys. But again, I'm not changing my mind on it. What I said was true. So have fun going to, I guess, the New Year's Six Bowl. And who knows? Maybe we'll see you next year and it'll be a little bit different. Maybe. That's what makes those games so much fun, right? You never know what to expect. Except you guys have won a lot. You can't expect that. And honestly, if Arkansas is playing and doing the things that they've been doing, I'd expect you all to win again next year, too. So, congrats on the win. You guys are still annoying, though, and you guys are still weird. But either way, appreciate you listening in, appreciate you watching in, and thank you to all of you who watch the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can get after me on Twitter, Buzz John Neighbors, for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have, and we'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.